Okay, so I'm here to tell you about uh, free innovation. Um, you'll hear a lot, uh, a lot of resonation from what uh, Martin just uh, spoke about. Um, perhaps a little bit, little bit more practical. So uh, we met in, in August. Um, we were part of a accelerator program that the Dutch uh, consulate here in, in Cape Town organized, um, where they picked five companies and they brought over five Dutch entrepreneurs and we worked with them for two weeks. Each company uh, was in some sort of innovation or innovative um, area that they, they work in. And we could pick a problem and we worked with these Dutch entrepreneurs. Um, Martijn and, and Kim came over as well as part of that. Um, and we met and we spoke a lot about uh, permanent beta and, and what he told you about uh, today. So <coughs> out of that, we, uh, our company thought, you know, how can we practically start applying this in, in South Africa? Um, and from that, free innovation was born. So I'm going to start with a few sort of definition type things and then try and try and pull those together uh, into to what we think is a, a practical way to make this work. Um, so first of all, what is a business? Um, no? Where am I? This side. Okay, so there's a textbook or a dictionary definition of a business. The primary or the, the aim of a business, the primary aim of a business um, is to add value, right? For private companies, that means making a profit, okay? Um, you could, you know, probably disagree with this, or, but if you're not adding value and as a private company you're not making profit, then you're going to die. So uh, money is still at the core of, of this, that what a business is. Um, risk, let's talk about risk. Risk simply is the probability of loss. So, you know, damage, injury, liability, loss. Negative occurrence, but loss. As a business, risk is, in other words, the opposite. It's the chance of you not being a business, not being a successful business. So, and then let's look at the risks of innovation. So, who here uh, is an entrepreneur? Who works for themselves? Okay, so a few. So, the rest of you work for salaries, right? Who works for a salary? Let me put the question so you can put your hand up as an answer. Okay. Um, if, uh, keep your hand up if you work for a salary. Uh, if your boss is not here and you're uncomfortable saying, uh, but why are you not an entrepreneur? What are the reasons for working for, this, for a salary for you? And this is not, there's not a, it's not a, a right or a wrong or entrepreneurs are better or not. Um, why is that? There are, there are reasons. So if anybody's comfortable telling me, that would be great. Well, I want to be an entrepreneur. That's my goal. But yeah. I have to build the, the resources for it. Okay. So you want to be an entrepreneur. You have to build the resources, right? So it's about there's a cost involved in being an entrepreneur and you need to build up the resources to, to do that, okay? Anything else? Anybody else wants to? Pardon? I didn't want to send bills. You don't, you don't want to send bills, <laughs> okay? Um, yeah. Oh, it's the Wi-Fi kicking in. Um, <clears throat> okay, so it's simply, you know, that it, you don't want to work with clients, you want to focus on what you want to do, okay? No, work with the clients is okay. But, but you don't want to get the money, you know, ask them, actually ask them for money. <laughs> Somebody else can do that, okay? Um, so, startups, being an entrepreneur, you know, uh, and, and starting something means you have to innovate. You have to do something new. Uh, as an entrepreneur, you're never going to just succeed if you just copy what somebody else is doing. So uh, there's a great book by Peter Thiel, uh, who started PayPal, um, and uh, it's called Zero to One. And it's all about startups. And he says in the book, it, he talks about how you know, traditional businesses um, take 
something and they expand the, the market of that. So they take it from one to N. They take this product and they sell more of it and they build it to, to N. What startups do is they take it from zero to one. They're inventing something new. So as an entrepreneur, that's what you have to do. You have to take something from zero and take it to one to be successful. And there's risk in that. So there's the cost, you know, what if you, you're going to put in resources, what if this doesn't work and you lose those resources? Um, there's, um, there's, first of all, you're going to do something and the market is unpredictable. What if the market doesn't accept this, what you're doing, right? There's that risk. Um, there's the risk that the, the market actually accepts what you're doing but it costs you so much to, to create this new product, to do what you do, that at the price point the market accepts it and the amount of people that are willing to pay that price, if you add all of that together, it's still lower than your investment. So you don't make a return on your investment. There's a loss, that's a, that's a risk. Um, that, by the way, is something you find very often in South African uh, situation. Because quite often you have this great idea and the market is simply too small for this idea to work. So you have to think global. Okay, there's availability of resources, which you spoke about. So you have these resources um, or you don't have enough resources to, to innovate and it's safer to rather spend those resources on something that you know works and that's, that's safe. And there's opportunity cost because to innovate you're going to expend resources, time, money um, on this new thing. Um, and you could have been using those resources on something safer. So you're giving up this known, well, pretty safe uh, opportunity of making you know, a profit for, for this innovative thing that you're building, um, which just, you know, couldn't work or could possibly not work. Then the question is, what if we change this? What if failure had no cost? What if there was no, ch you know, um, the, the fact that you, that you fail didn't cost you anything, didn't cost you resources, uh, didn't cost you opportunity cost? Well, then if we could somehow, we'll get to, you know, how we think you can do that. First of all, if you could manage that, the probability of loss becomes zero because there's no cost to, to the failure. The probability of making a return on your investment becomes one because you're spending nothing. So whatever you uh, get from this innovation, if it's only learning something, you're making a return on that investment. You will always get more out of it than what you put in. And there's no impact on the other work that is adding value, that you're already the safe, the safe part, right? Okay, so keep that in mind, and now I'm jumping to something else, another concept. Okay, so it's, there's ampleness and abundance. I just wanted to uh, sort of define those two. Ampleness means, you know, having ample of something means adequate. It's enough for you. Perhaps more than adequate, but you know that's what ample means. Abundance is the next step. Abundance means you have more than you can ever use of something. Not just money. Um, in fact, I believe nobody can really have an abundance of money because they can always use the money for something else. But there are many things, knowledge, time, space that you can have an abundance of, which if, if you're not going to use the extra part that you, you, know, you can't use, it's, it's lost forever. Time, for example, uh, or space. So how can we remove risk? How can we make the cost uh, of failure? Removing risk, uh, how can we do that through sharing? So. Our idea is if we have something in abundance, and here a good example perhaps is, is our company uh, called Polymorph. Uh, we're in Stellenbosch, we build mobile apps. We work in you know, what's 
really a sort of a, a new way of working. Many companies are working that way now, startups especially. We're remote first. So we have our office space in Stellenbosch. Um, it's big enough for all 20 people in the company. They can come and sit there. But we say that you can work wherever you want to and wherever you are most productive. So if you arrive on a Tuesday morning like this morning, there are four people at the office. Out of the 20, 16 were working from home or a coffee shop or wherever they are uh, today. So we have all of this office space available. We're already paying monthly rent for that office space, right? That space is available. Whether we use it or not, we're paying for it. So if we give it to somebody else, we don't lose. There's no loss to us, right? But we're sharing it with somebody else that doesn't have space, and now we're creating ampleness for them. Now they have, an, they have just enough to do what they want to do there. Okay, so... If, there's no, if you do that, there's no chance of loss on either side, right? We can't lose anything by sharing the extra space we have or the extra time we have. If, if we were a traditional company and we worked there in the week, on Saturdays, there's nobody at the office. We have the time available. We can, we can share it with other people. And there's no chance of loss, so there's no risk. So once, so once a week will... So every Wednesday, so every Wednesday, all 20 are there. All 20 are there on a Wednesday, right? Yeah. So, it's, so, so tell me, what's the difference between what we're doing and all 20 being there every day? What's the difference between the two? Which one's, which one's cheaper? In, in total for the economy, which one's cheaper? Yeah. If you don't need to have an office in your house, you can use a smaller house. Yes. If you don't have to drive to the office, you can use the 2,000 Rand a month you spend on petrol to buy yourself a desk but and a screen. Pardon? But then you don't go there ever. Well, you said if you don't have to drive. Yes. If you don't have to drive from Durbanville to our office, you're saving 2,000 Rand a month. You're still saving money by not coming to the office. So it's a net. There's a net saving, right? I, In I, our I model. Yeah. Business is still a commercial entity. It runs. They run it as a business. It's always the same because they run slightly differently. And the discussion is not about that. Mm -hmm. They do have space available for that. 
Yeah, yeah. So let's let's remove that I'm at Polymorph. Let's say Polymorph is a company that's really stupidly run by the CEO, but still profitable, and they have this extra space. Let's assume that. Because you're right. It's not about Polymorph. It's not about. You're not losing anything, right? You're not losing anything, so there's, there's no cost. So whatever you're going, if you meet one person, like through, through free, free Innovation, uh, one of our uh, new employees uh, that starts uh, in January, uh, one of the brightest students at Stellenbosch University, we met through that. We would never have connected through him. Okay, so yes, you can do a cost analysis of how much it would have cost us to recruit him and all of that, but through this, we got to know him. Uh, it's a, uh, Matein used the, the, uh, the phrase, it's a honeypot. We're meeting uh, interesting people. Just that, because there's no cost, that's a benefit. That's a net benefit, right? That's a return on the investment. Yeah, so again, Polymorph CEO is running this company really badly. He's, you know, a stupid model, all of that. <laughs> but he's doing it profitably somehow, <laughs> though it's the stupid model. And he has space available that he can donate that doesn't cost him anything. I think that's the, the key to get to. Um, and by doing that, there's no risk to Polymorph because there's, no, there's nothing they can lose. Um, if it wasn't, if it was everybody worked from home, uh, then all of those people would have two hours extra a day uh, that they weren't sitting in cars and that time they could donate. So there would be something to, okay? Let's assume that. Okay, so that's where free innovation uh, comes from. What is free innovation? It's a collaborative community um, of open innovation. Um, and that frees the community to solve problems without risk. Free uh, in the word free and free innovation, uh, the word free in, in English has two meanings, as you know. It's if you tie it to cost, it means you know there is no cost, but it also means free, not uh, constrained by by bounds or barriers. So that, to me, is uh, the more important meaning of free innovation. Yes, the, you know. We're trying to reduce the cost to, of innovation to be zero, but we are trying to free innovation from the bureaucracy and the barriers that are keeping people from innovating. So people from any background and discipline uh, can participate in the community. And we bring people together with an abundance of, anybody with an abundance of time, tools, space, knowledge, and specifically, you can see there, it's, it's not money. Um, people that have extra, if you have an extra tool, an extra, you know, uh, your hobby is woodworking and you have a wood saw and you're only using it on Saturdays when you do that hobby um, and you're willing to put it in a, in a different space, you can uh, bring it to the community and the community can use it when you're not using it. Okay. So I'll, I'll show you an example of exactly that, where somebody, uh, as a business, using a 3D printer, um, they're still running their business, uh, you know, um, using that 3D printer, but there are times when that 3D printer is not used. It doesn't cost them anything if uh, somebody else wants to use it and they're willing to just pay for the, for the filament. Okay, so the idea, yeah, the, the key is, that we say no cost innovation is no risk innovation. And now the key is that means rapid problem solving. Because if there's a risk to innovation, people have to wait until they've built up enough resources that they feel safe to take the risk. If there's no risk, you can try any idea you have. And if it fails, there's no cost. And you can try the next idea and the next idea. That's the nice thing about you know, um, a community like this where we can explore ideas and try them because there's no risk involved. Okay, so practically what does that mean for free innovation? All we do 
is bring people together. We don't train people. We don't facilitate uh, technology or workshops. Uh, we're, we're not uh, trying to you know, push our own solutions into the community, none of that. We are just bringing people together. The power lies in that. Um, we practically were organized through Meetup and Facebook, and two things are needed for this community uh, to get together and solve problems. The one is spaces. So we have um, maker spaces. Um, the first one that we started is in our office. We have the space available, um, and that's the first maker space uh, of the, the free innovation community. When you have the space, the second thing is you actually need an event like this. You need to get people together. And we are organizing the opportunities for the community to meet around specific hackathons and the idea is to solve real problems. So the community must come up with a real problem from the community. Here it's Stellenbosch. Many of you here are from Stellenbosch. So the first hackathon we did was we thought, um, you know, traffic's a really big problem in, in Stellenbosch, Cape Town, everywhere. Let's look at traffic and what solutions we can find for that. Yeah, sure. Um, how does uh, that come from the community? How do you uh, collect ideas from the community? So uh, there's a communication forum on Meetup. Uh, we're still at now, for now, we're using meetup.com. Uh, it's very easy to post something on there. So, you know, we can uh, post a uh, question on there, get input, have a vote um, in some way. That we still have to figure out how we'll. Um, this is very early. We've, we launched a month ago. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the launch, but the idea is to, for the, the community to, to separate itself from Polymorph. Polymorph's driving it, started it, but the community must become you know, self-sustaining um, and then decide on how to do that, uh, whether it's by a, a vote system or somebody can suggest something. Uh, for the first one, the people that were willing to organize it got together and sort of decided, uh, got suggestions and we decided here's a, here's a good one. Okay, so uh, the results of, of uh, practically what we did, we launched on the 1st of October. Uh, there's 168 members um, in the community already uh, as of this morning, I think I checked the last time. The first hackerspace is at our office in Stellenbosch in Techno Park. Um, and we already have a second hackerspace. Uh, it will be in Kaimandi, the township in Stellenbosch, um, at one of the high schools. Um, um, Autodesk through Eduvate, um, uh donated, I think, 32 laptops and two 3D printers, and they're installing all of that in a big computer lab in one of the high schools there. Um, and through Eduvate, we can get access to that space. So that there will be a, um, a meetup space in Kaimandi as well. Um, because the, 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 f the first time, uh, on the launch, we realized that what we're trying to do is lower the barriers and by having it in our office in Techno Park, it costs 10 Rand for a taxi from Kaimandi to uh, Techno Park and 10 Rand back. That 20 Rand for some people is a barrier. They couldn't attend because it costs 20 Rand to attend this and we really want to make it free and com if we can c completely remove the barriers, everybody can take part. So that's, that's a part of, of that, um, trying that. Okay, so as I said, uh, the theme of the first uh, hackathon um, that was also the launch uh, was Hack Stellenbosch Traffic. Um, the space was at our office. Uh, lunch was sponsored by the University of Stellenbosch Robotics Club. So. Um, Polymorph's involved with the Robotics Club uh, through sponsorship um, and at the end of the year uh, quite a few of the students of the Robotics Club became members of the, the community and the Robotics Club said uh, you know we have um, budget available still it's the end of the year that we can spend on events or whatever we'll sponsor the lunch and we said thank you very much. Uh, electronics 
Um, we tend to focus on a lot of um, IoT type mobile projects. So we have all sorts of development boards and IoT kits lying around in the office. For us to put that there so people can use it uh, on, a, a, on a day like this, it doesn't cost us anything if they don't take it home with them, if they just use it there. Um, and now people that can't afford this kit can actually use it on the day. Um, the idea to product lab uh, has five 3D printers. Like I said, it's a, it's a business. They're, they're running it. You can go there. You can 3D print stuff. It doesn't cost them anything to have one of the printers there and to send so, uh, some of the products that they want printed, uh, that their customers want printed, still to us and have it printed. And in the meantime, in the off times, we can use it. Um, big success, 55 people. Okay, 55 people um, attended, uh, which we think is a, was, a, was a great success for the, for the launch day. Uh, the challenge is to build on that, to keep that momentum. Um, uh, Martijn said, you know, it takes 10 or 15 of these to before that community really, really takes over. So um, these are just some of the pictures, er everything from Lego, um, to this guy built a uh, piece of software, it could take a video feed, and this was an offer day, it could take a video feed from a traffic camera and count the number of cars, so we could count the number of cars in a queue at a traffic light, so we could make traffic lights more dynamic um, and synchronized to the traffic and not just to some timing system, uh, because that is one of the big problems that causes traffic in Stellenbosch. So 11 different solutions, everybody broke into different groups, worked on a, on a solution that they were interested in um, after a brainstorming session. Um, all of that uh, we also put on the site and that, those conversations are continuing on the site. So the community um, <coughs> has the space and the opportunity to meet, but in between the community still exists and communicates and can keep working on this and, and uh, take this, these solutions forward. Okay, so that's my story. Questions? Any questions? When is the next? When is the next? Um, early next year, we still have to decide. We're actually, uh, there's an, another community that I think a lot of you know about modern alchemists. Um, so Robin Farrow that started uh, Modern Alchemists, uh, we had coffee about a week or two ago and we realized what Free Innovation is doing and what Modern Alchemists are doing is very much the same. Um, so don't quote me on it, but I think it makes a lot of sense to put the two together and we have to figure that out and then we'll know what's next. Hmm. Uh, because a lot of ideas resonate in the, in the story you just said. Yeah. Um, so, from a you know, cold, selfish business owner <laughs> view, uh, what resonated for me was this idea of this honeypot and, and getting innovative people together. Uh, because as a business, uh, what, what we like doing as Polymorph, uh, the typical projects are the zero to one projects. We build prototypes and the first version of a product um, and then we hand it over to our client and they take it further with their internal team. That's what we're good at, is building that first product with lower risk. Which means we like to work with people with ideas, innovative ideas. Um, and we want to attract more of those people to our business. And this is a way to meet more of those people uh, to, to just be involved in a community and to see what opportunities um, are, are available in the community. Um, so it's not a, you know, there's, that's, the, that's basically the, the main question, or answer to the question of what's the return of, uh, on investment for us, is that, meeting these people and whatever, you know, the connections are in that, that, that community can form. Um, there's, there's a, uh, the, the, typical saying that sounds very cynical, it's not what you know, but it's who you know. Um, and you can put a positive spin on that by saying, you know, it's by, by building networks and connecting people and just bringing the right people together, um, you, can, you can solve a lot of problems rather than one person with, with knowledge. 
Okay. I'm just curious. How yeah. Yeah, I think um, another saying I really believe is that uh, talent is distributed evenly, opportunity is not. So there's just as much talented people in townships as in the rich neighborhood around Bishops or Paul Roos in Stellenbosch um, that have ideas, that are willing to, to solve problems and have ideas to, to solve the problems around them. Um, they don't have the same opportunities. So that's what you know, we aim to do is create those opportunities by, if, if I truly believe if we can give people the tools and the time and the, the other people with knowledge that can help them develop their idea, um, they'll come up with solutions to, to the problems around them. Um, one example, and that's not even through free innovation that I know of in Kaimandi, uh, is an entrepreneur that has a business and he's teaching people to uh, build vegetable gardens from recycled products, uh, you know, right behind their shack, and they can start growing their own food. And, you know, he, he um, uses empty Coke bottles, two liter Coke bottles with a little a bit of soil in there, and he's teaching people just that skill. So by having a few empty Coke bottles, filling it with soil, seeds, teaching people how to do that, they can grow their own food. Um, and that knowledge is spreading throughout Kaimani and people are doing that. Um, so it's, uh, the, the, the will is there, um, the innovation is there. It's, it's about, you know, giving opportunity for that in innovation to grow. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, our closest library is in Edis Falay in, um, in Stellenbosch. Um, and whenever I go there with my kids, there's five people sitting right outside the library where the free Wi-Fi <laughs> reception still is with their phones. Um, and like Matane always says, you know, there's um, Wikipedia, there's um, Hacker Day, there's all sorts of sites where if you just add internet access, you can probably find somebody that has a solution that you can apply to, to your local problem. Okay, thank you very much.